Hi everyone, I am here with Thomas Buttonshin and Chief One, who are another of the acts competing in Dance Melody Grand Prix 2021, and they are both aiming to represent Denmark at Eurovision this year. How are you both doing? Great. Oh, good. Sun is shining. Yes. Well, it's a bit cloudy here for me, but there's a bit of sun. <laughs> Um, obviously, it's been a couple of days now since the big reveal that you're both competing in Dance Melody Grand Prix. How has the response been um, over the past few days and to your song? I mean, it's been it's been great. People have been so nice and they've been so thrilled. And they've, I mean, from a lot of countries, even though, you know, the song is in Danish. <laughs> A lot of people from other countries has, has, has even written like, hey, we love the vibe and we love the energy and go on Denmark and stuff like that. So, it, I mean, it's been, yeah, it's really, it's almost been mind blowing, you know, that yeah. compared to what I thought it would be. But it's, you know, the response has just been, it's been, it's been very good. And I also think there's like a big desire for Eurovision this year, because, you know, as we know that, was canceled canceled last year and this year hasn't been the most joyful of them all so i think people really need something joyful something to to cheer them up so this music fest can surely be something yeah definitely so we should say your your song is called height over skiena if my danish is uh, not too bad <laughs> that's good above the clouds yes high above the clouds um for those who don't speak Danish, uh, do you want to explain a little bit about uh, what the lyrics are all about? Thomas? Um, it's about... It's about the close relation, you know? It's about the people that you love, that you want to be close to, that can bring you high above the skies. I mean, that's that's the reason why the metaphor is in the song. Um, yeah, you want to be with the people that lifts you up and especially in, in, in times like these where the world is where it is at. Um, I believe that that's what people want to hear. And we, we really want to remind people about the people that they have close. And yeah. So it's, 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 it's still a song for the people that you have nearby. Yeah. And being in the now also, you know, just being right now and right here, just, just actually being, you know, doing your best uh, with other people and trying to find the things in life that makes you feel in love. I mean, mm -hmm. no matter if you're a dog or your best friend or your wife, just 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 focus on that thing that makes your heart like come warmer. So when when you're when you're singing this song, do you, each of you have sort of maybe a specific person or group of people in mind that you're you're singing about? To me, to me, it's about, you know, like this day when the sun finally appears in Denmark, it's like two or three days in a year. But one, once one it happens, we celebrate a lot and you feel like going out in a park and just 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 be be a child, just be crazy, just just be like you are when you're in love. I mean, that's I think that when you're in love, you're you're close to the absolutely now because you're just feeling everything that's around you. And if you just let go of the negativity and all the bad mouthing people and just find the people that want you to do your best and be at your best. That's, that's, that's the feeling I get from, from doing and hearing the song. Copy that. <laughs> Great. Um, so it is in Danish and you said you've received, you know, responses from people across the world um, and further afield in response to your song, if you were to go to Eurovision, would you like to keep it in Danish, seeing as people have still responded um, to it, or would you think about translating it? I think it's, I mean, you could do it in Danish and celebrate, you know, the differences of each person in Europe and the countries. But again, it's also about reaching out to everyone and if you go back in time and when there was a time when you had to do your songs in your native language, 
and it was always Ireland and Malta, you know, all the ones who were singing either in Spanish or German or English who won. And that's, you know, obviously, it's not that people like those languages more, but they're more used to it. So I, I did my that rap song. I had a guy doing the rap song in 1996. Yeah, and we yeah. were allowed to do it in English and he did it in Danish. And that was definitely one of the reasons it got really low, low, uh, low results because people were like, what's, what's this dude rapping about? It was all gibberish to them. So I think we have to do that, not have to, but I think we will do that in, in, in English okay. to reach out, you know, to everyone. Yeah, because you've, um, Chief One, you've sort of won Dance Melody Grand Prix three times as a songwriter. Um, so as you mentioned, it was like 96, 97 was the first one. And then again in 2012 and 2015, what made you sort of decide, you know what, I'm going to actually get up on stage and perform this time rather than just be behind the scenes? Because I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think. I think in life, you just have to take every day as a new day and think that things that happened like years ago, I mean, it's almost like a book. You just have, it, this is a new chapter. And I met Thomas and we did a very, very big song in Denmark and we got up on each other's energy. And <laughs> when this song, we wrote this song, it was like, it was, it was just, the stomach was just saying, this has to be, be on the Eurovision. And who better than to do it than, than us because we, we, we did it. I mean, so actually I, I, I have no, I have no answer for your question other than, you know, I'm just taking each day as, as a cup. So. Cool. Yeah. And I guess, uh, Thomas, this is your dance melody Grand Prix sort of debut. Um, why, why did you think that this was the song to sort of, I don't know, finally, finally get involved with the contest? Because you've obviously had, um, you know, an established career before this. So why was this the time that you decided to sort of uh, go on and do it? Mm, I never, I never actually saw it as an option. You know, for me, it was like, I never, I never had the idea. I just, you know, I'm just a guy that writes songs about the people and the surroundings that I love and that I hate. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just writing songs about everyday life and, and, and I never, I never thought that, you know, I should be in a place where my song had to be compared with somebody else. But, and that's still not how I see it. I see this as a platform, actually. I see this as a stage where I can get a lot of people to feel, feel themselves and feel the emotions that they also have. Because we all, we all believe in things and we all feel things. And, and hopefully this song can start some emotions up in the listeners out there and this platform is just it's a, it's a unique space to to present new songs and yeah it was a no-brainer for me it's like yeah <laughs> let's go okay so is there anything that you i know you probably can't reveal that much um but what can we sort of expect from you in terms of a performance uh for the contest in march <laughs> Uh, I'm at a point in the song. I'm gonna be invincible. That's that's okay. enough. We reveal how we do it, but it's gonna happen. I'm gonna disappear. No, no we, we we don't have any like like. I remember I was I was competing in Azerbaijan once, and there was these <laughs> very old Russian women who had like a pizza baker baking. Yeah, yeah. I we're not gonna go that that way, but it was fun. <laughs> But but I just we are, we're we're focusing a lot of of the organic and here here in Denmark this year we're having a live band. It's like the first time at, that it's going to be tried out where we have all live. So there's not going to be a backing track. It's going to be like we have like 14 musicians on the stage. So to me, it's more like this year is more about a, a music fest, a live fest. Yeah, I guess. It might be more of a, a live fest, but you're obviously going to be missing the audience and their sort of yeah. presence. Do you think that yeah. will make any impact in terms of um, how you go about performing? Will you, will you miss the live audience? 
Of course, of course, that's that's what we live. We we feed off of the energy from the audience. But then again, there's someone out there. So, I think we're just gonna see it as a big, great energy music video with hopefully a lot of people out there receiving the the message. And also, we're just happy that we're gonna play with people on the stage. I mean, that's a whole band. It's 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 a lot different than me being playing concert in my living room in front of a camera. I mean, <laughs> but so it's gonna be awesome. Can't wait. Can't, really can't wait. Great. Um, and I guess finally, do you have a message for? your international fans out there who have obviously got in touch with you uh, already and are playing your song anything that you'd both like to say to them uh, hopefully we can maybe in a in a in the future you know call them fans because obviously they they don't know us but but we're just grateful to be on this platform and i just want to Give a shout out to all you guys who have all these you know, blogs where you're doing a lot of, you're, you're very passionate about this. There's, there's so many, like in different countries, people who are like fire souls around this, uh, this event. And that's, uh, most of you guys are just doing it because you love it. And I, I guess no one even make a, a penny out of it. So it's just like, uh, it's, it's very, it's something that you have to put a price on. So. Thank you guys for that. That's good to keep the fire burning, the Eurovision fire. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just feel, I mean, I feel blessed that, that people are listening to my songs and that, that, that people can feel what I'm feeling in, through the music. So I'm just grateful that, that there's somebody out there that finds my song interesting enough for listening to it and actually pressing play on the button. And Thomas has a lot of English songs, so there's, there's, there's someone who can, you can listen to this guy if you, if you don't understand what, what we're saying in our song. Great, I'm sure they'll, they'll check it out. Thank you so much for joining us. Ooh. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah. Hope you, hopefully you're all right there, Jonathan. <laughs> Pardon? I just you okay? Side, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I live uh, near a hospital. But um, okay. it sort of comes part and parcel with that. But they're, they're obviously doing very important work. So I can live with a few sirens now and then. But, uh, <laughs> thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, all the best for the contest next month. Hi, everyone. This is Jonathan again from Wee Wee Blogs. And I am joined by Emma Nicoline, who is another of the eight contestants in Dance Melody Grand Prix 2021. And she is hoping to make her way to Eurovision this year in Rotterdam. Welcome. How are you? Hello. <laughs> I'm good. And you? Yes, I'm not too bad. Thanks. How has the response been so far? Because we're obviously speaking the day after the big announcement. How has everything been so far? Uh, everything has been crazy, you know. My phone, uh, very uh, many notifications. So I, I'm on my phone like uh, every uh, 10 minutes. Uh, so uh, it's it's very, I'm, I'm very happy uh, for it you know, the response uh, for the song so far. So I'm very, uh, I'm very happy. Great. Um, so your, your song in the contest is Store Lear Hair, yes. uh, which translates as Standing Right Here. Um, yes, exactly. For those who don't speak Danish, do you want to explain what sort of the song is about? Yes, uh, the song is about a friend. Uh, my, my, my friend Louise, she has been uh, a lot of uh, bad things in her life and she have not the, the believing herself. Uh, so it's a song for my friend that I'm standing right here. I, 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 I love you and I want to support you. But she's like, I, 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 I don't think I'm good enough or, you, you know, she missed the uh, confidence. Um, I'm sorry, my, I, my English is not good. <laughs> no, it's great. Uh, so it's a it's a song about friendship and she's she's good enough you know yeah yeah that totally makes sense um so is it is it important for you to sort of draw on your own personal experiences in your music yes uh, that's that's very important for me because 
I want my my um, my audience to know that this is from my heart. It's not uh, it's not a song for everything, but my music is so people can can understand uh, on their own experience um, uh, what they are dealing with. You know, everybody dealing with something. So it's it's mean a lot for you know you and other people can understand uh, the feeling about the the songs I made. Uh, during. Great. <laughs> yeah yeah so obviously it is in danish would you potentially translate it if you were to, to go to eurovision or would you want to keep it in danish i i think uh, that's is a secret from now but uh, there are hope for a lot of things so you can understand it uh, okay interesting interesting uh well yeah we'll have to see how it goes then yeah <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is obviously your uh, sort of your first big single, your first release. Um, yes. Why? Why did you decide that decide that this song was the one? Yes, this is the one that I want to start everything off with. Um, because uh, when I can see hook line, I have a, a translator here oh, with me, fine. my producer, yeah, with people. Uh, <laughs> I think that um, yes, I'm trying to answer on yeah. Anna's behalf. Uh, if that's okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, we we've worked a lot together, and uh, yeah, obviously it's MS project and songs. Um, and I feel like the main reason why you felt that this should be the one to start with is that it's kind of a serious song. You know, it's, it, it has a serious message uh, and that's, you know, you're a serious person. You have something on your mind um, and it's still a up kind of an up-tempo song, you know. So it's, it's, not, it's a party you know, song. Yeah, yeah, kind of can, can feel like a party song as yeah. well. That's how I... Yeah, he produced the, the song actually. Okay, great. So, so it's sort of, yeah, it's, it's still a beat, but it's got a good message behind it as well. So it combines those two bits together, yeah. Um, exactly. It's also very 80s inspired. Um, is is that 80s sort of sound something that you're you're sort of really keen with and to use in your music? Can you uh, can you say it again? Sure. Yes. So the song has quite a nice Thank 80s you. sound to it. It's got a bit of synth pop in there. Yes. Is that sort of yes, 80s exactly. sound? Um, something that you're keen to use in a lot of your music? Yes, it's, uh, it's 80s and uh, 19s uh, music. We're trying to, uh, to um, put it from again, uh, get it the... Uh, to get back? Yeah, to get, it, uh, to get the 80s back, you know, like the, the song uh, from uh, Aqua. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they have a song called... Yeah, back to the 80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And love that. yeah and i love that yeah so there's a, there's been a lot of sort of 80s inspired music recently um you know sort of uh blinding lights and physical by dua lipa they've all they've all had a bit of an 80s twist why why do you think it's why do you think that this sort of 80s trend has sort of has come back now That's a good question, <laughs> but uh, I can say that I I I have always loved uh, that uh, that music because of my my childhood. I I heard a lot about uh, a lot of uh, music in in the eighties. So you like to get it back because that's where I see myself in music. Uh, yeah. Cool. This is your first uh, not only your first ever single but it's your first ever tv appearance um sort of a big event how how are you feeling about all the cameras and and everything oh i'm 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 nervous i'm i'm very very nervous uh, because you know it's my my first single on tv in front of everybody so I'm I'm very nervous, but I'm I'm excited and I'm looking forward to do it and sing my song. 
through my brand and yeah. Is there, I know you can't say a lot, but can you just, I don't know, give some descriptive words about what we might expect to see on stage? Um, um, what do you say, uh, Strings. 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 Uh, and uh, yeah, and a little dance moves. And uh, yeah, I think I cannot say uh, much. Uh, cool. Um, <laughs> obviously, um, this year is quite different in terms that there won't be an audience. And yes. in a way, you, you could have sort of tried to wait a year and start in 2022 where everything might have been normal. Why did you think it was important to sort of start everything uh, this year? Um, I think uh, the, the time is now for uh, my music to, to come out and and I think in, in, in Denmark, there is a, a lot of music that that I think uh, this is something that I can see the mangla. Uh, it's, it's kind of uh, relevant for for you where yeah. you are musically. Um, and you think there's not that much in Denmark, that, which sounds like this. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of a few perspectives in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and I guess finally, then, is there anything you would like to say to your international fans who are out there and I'm sure are already listening to your song and uh, yeah, those people that are watching here on BB Blogs? I will. I will first say I'm. I'm so sorry that I. I don't uh, good to English, <laughs> uh, but I'm. I'm. I'm very, I'm very glad for all the the message that the, everybody have sent me. It's it's very overwhelming, and I'm I'm very very happy and uh, and and thank you so much for the support. Oh, lovely. Uh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Um, yes. All the best for the contest next month, thank and yeah, you. fingers crossed for you all and everything. So yeah, good luck. Thank you so much, and and good luck to you too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> thank do. you for being Thanks. so nice to me. <laughs> all right. See you later. See you later. Bye. Hey everyone, this is Jonathan again, and with me now are Fear or Flamme, one of the acts who are competing in Dance Melody Grand Prix 2021 and hoping to represent Denmark at Eurovision this year. Welcome, how are you both? We're good. Yeah, we, 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 we just uh, tried our stage clothing uh, this morning. It, it, this is not the stage clothing. No, 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 uh, not this. Yeah. Exciting. So, so, yeah, and then uh, it was today that they, they officially announced uh, the competitors in Denmark. So it's all new and exciting, and we uh, obviously didn't do this before. So uh, yeah, everything is new. The the clothes uh, on the rack behind you are nothing to do with the performance either. No, that's my. This is my bedroom. <laughs> good, good. Um, so we've obviously got Jesper and Loritz. Um, how did this sort of duo come about? How did you sort of decide to sort of start this up? Um, so uh, originally Jesper is an actor and uh, I'm a singer, songwriter and uh, play a lot of different instruments. <laughs> We're sitting at the piano right now, we always do. But uh, then we, uh, we have known each other for a while, but four years ago we, uh, we caught up and uh, just uh, talked about making some music actually very much inspired from the Melodi Grand Prix and uh, the Eurovision back in the days. So more 80s inspired, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've been making music for these last three or four years. And uh, some of the music, um, it's just, we're very much into the 80s and the 80s sound and the kitsch sound of the 80s. So it's not all Eurovision, ish but yeah but uh, it's it's uh, like a glove where when we're competing there now yeah yeah so i mean i i write sort of uh, a weekly music roundup for for wee wee blogs for all the new 
releases from past Eurovision stars. And sort of throughout 2020, it sort of felt like there was rarely a week that went by where someone wasn't releasing a sort of 80s inspired synth pop track. What do you think it is about this 80s sound that has just captured everyone's attention over the past year or so? Uh, I think it might be because it uh, it, it it creates uh, hope. Uh, all uh, all of the world are in a very sad situation, and you know, uh, a good dance song might be it might be the right time to to dance or feel like dance, uh, even if you can't, uh, because there have been sad times enough, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's uh, to me it's a uh, it's a feeling of hope uh, for better days. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then uh, now, uh, for many good reasons, you don't understand the lyrics, uh, but we feel like writing uh, music that uh, sounds a little more like the eighties or the late seventies. Uh, it. Uh, we can say uh, some other things uh, in the lyrics, uh, tell other stories that uh, uh, yeah, that you're not allowed to, or, or it's very difficult to put in these uh, uh, this new uh, new kind of songwriting, if you know what I mean. Um, uh, it's there, there's uh, it's such a complete other way of writing songs. Um, so it's not only the sound it's actually also the, the way it's written where we're very uh, um, inspired by uh, in this particular case uh, Bee Gees and ABBA and uh, yeah stuff like that cool so can we can we expect a full-on sort of 80s style performance from you at the contest yeah yeah I would say you know uh our uh, outfits and uh, are uh, inspired by our, our heroes. Uh, so I, uh, when I'm in the right mood, I feel like uh, modern talking, not in the sound, but you know, I'm running towards the microphone and stuff like that. And he looks cool and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, so we should say your song is called Uwe Ospa Hinanden. Uh, which translates in English as practice on each other. What's what's the, um, for people that don't understand the lyrics, that don't speak Danish, what's, what's the message behind the song? So uh, the lyrics part is, uh, it's a scene on a dance floor uh, with uh, a man and uh, a woman uh, in particular, uh, and they, they see each other and move slowly. And uh, it's like, uh, they don't exactly know what to do, but they take one step and another and try to make it work. And uh, he, uh, the guy, has practiced uh, some some things uh, from from home uh, um, in front of the mirror and uh, tries them. Uh, uh, and you know, uh, you can paraphrase that to a lot of other things in life. You know, uh, with all these new situations that we're going through right now, or just uh, how to. Uh, um, get the attention from uh, from someone else, you know, uh, you don't always know what to do. You have to just move along and, and practice on the way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess uh, with everyone stuck inside and lockdown, we've had a lot of time to practice on ourselves. So uh, it'll be interesting <laughs> to uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, the wider world. If this uh, society will uh, open uh, opens up again, we have to learn from the start how to hug each other without being scared, you know. Yeah, true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't practice that at home with a doll. You, you need to do <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. it the first couple of times. <laughs> Um, so with the song being in Danish, we, we obviously haven't actually heard Danish at Eurovision since 1997. So would you be excited to bring the language back to the contest? Yeah, very much, yeah. very much. And uh, we don't think that this song would be uh, very good in English. Uh, don't get me wrong, but it, it, that's not what, what we're bringing to the game because this is a dream for us coming true. Uh, and we've seen it when we were uh little boys uh when they didn't uh, 
um, translate the songs. So that's a, that's a big thing for us. Yeah. Yeah, right. I think um, I think you know recently a lot of um, we've had Portugal and Ukraine winning with not completely English language songs. So it's mm. nice. It's nice to see a lot more uh, native languages in in there as well. Mm. Yeah. It's um, like a post, right? So so yeah. Mm -hmm. When I when you say Portugal, I I think of that so, uh, song in particular. Uh, it's more it's uh, it's much more like a postcard from Portugal that year. Uh, yeah. So we would very much be uh, honored to be the postcard from Denmark. Um, you say you're sort of um, obviously you've been watching Eurovision and Dance Monday Grand Prix since you know you were little, um, and this is sort of a dream come true. How? Um, how would you sort of take things further if you were to sort of get to Eurovision? Would you, um, how would how would you envision things going? Do you want to sort of make the most of it and put everything in sort of the, into the performance as possible? I think that uh, uh, the thing that made our uh, breakthrough in Denmark is uh, the way we are being ourselves. Uh, we can't wear sponsored clothes. We can't have like a thousand dancers. We're like a unit in in, in two persons, and um, it would be pretty much the same. I think uh, I can't imagine uh, how to make a great dance song even more dancey, dancey with a lot of dancers. Maybe fireworks. We like that, uh, but it's it's always scaled up. So uh, if we are uh, in a position where we have to go to Rotterdam. I imagine that's a much bigger stage and we had to figure out how to use that. And yeah, uh, of uh, so, of course, uh, uh, all these uh, types of things, uh, but it brings uh, memories uh, up when you see these big stages uh, from the 90s and they just stand there. That, that, that has a charm to it as well. So, uh, but uh, you can be, be sure we're, we're, we're going to put a show that you will remember. Great. Um, obviously, things are working a bit different this year and there won't be an audience at Dance Money Du Grand Prix and stuff like that. Are you, are you sort of sad about that in one way or sort of do you think it, your style of performance will still, you know, resonate without a live audience there? Actually, the only uh, shows we've played so far as a band uh, is on television shows this year okay. or the last year. So we're pretty used to it. Um, uh, but of course, it's uh, it's it's a weird year to be competing. Of course, so we would always, yeah, be playing for how many twenty thousand people in Rotterdam. Uh, of yeah. course, yeah, that would be amazing. And be you have to be positive about it because this is uh, okay. There's no audience, but then we have to make the greatest music video live with the cameras mm. in the studio. I, that's the thing. And you know, in the Danish production, they uh acknowledge that the there is no audience so the scenography is more like a tube and all yeah, yeah it's kind of cool um i guess finally um there's obviously a lot of international fans out there now that will be watching this uh, and i'm sure have had your song on repeat uh, since it was released earlier today what message do you have for them uh, watching right now to be honest, there is a love storm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the international fans, I, I think uh, welcome to our universe, and uh, it's it's very uh, it's a big honor to uh, to be uh, yeah presented to to all the to yeah to everyone. Um, we play in Danish, and to be uh, heard around the world is an absolute privilege. Uh, yeah. So uh, be gentle and uh, and listen to the song a couple of times and. Hopefully you can dance around and in your uh, weird uh, Danish, try to sing along to it. Dance and rhythm have no, uh, have no language. Yeah. Yeah, great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Um, all the best for the contest next month. Thank, thank, thank you. So much. See you, Jonathan. Thank you, bye. Hi everyone, I am here with the Cosmic Twins, who are one of the acts competing in Dance Melody Grand Prix 2021 with the aim of representing Denmark at Eurovision this year in May. How are you both? Thank you, we're good. We're good. 
thanks for having us. No problem at all. So I know one of you is Chris and one of you is Alec, but you might want to yeah. tell us who's who. I, I would like you to guess, just like, <laughs> wow. Oh, um, oh, oh, um, I don't know. Well, I don't know who, who would be the person to go for the, the full quiff. So I don't know. We'll just, we'll just, yeah. uh, we'll just guess Chris has decided to put his hair up. <laughs> no, this is Alec. Uh. Oh. Close, close. Well, that's 50 50 chance, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Alec and I'm Chris. Yeah. Great. Um, so, I guess you you must get along quite well as brothers if you're willing to spend all your time together, both as family and uh, as a musical duo. Yeah, I mean, we, we get along pretty well. Uh, it's, it's pretty challenging at some points, you know, to spend such amount of time together when you when you're such a like, uh, yeah. but we see it as an as a blessing in some way that we also a curse, yeah. but also, also a blessing, yeah, blessing and a curse. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we get along pretty well, and um, we have our ways to get past the challenges. <laughs> so. Have you ever sort of been the twins that would pretend to be the other one to sort of mess people around and? Go into other people's classes and whatever. Well, we did something like it uh, when we went to elementary school, where uh, it was one of the last days, like um, of elementary school, and we changed uh, classes. So I would attend his, and he yeah, attended yeah. mine. And the, the teacher teachers, looked like so, like yeah. she looked funny at us. Just yeah, she didn't like know what, no. what was going on, but she couldn't like put a finger on what was no. going on. Like. And she couldn't she couldn't mention it because it would be so awkward if yeah, she, if so she were wrong. So she would she just would go go with it. Yeah. yeah, she just went with it. So yeah, she went with it, yeah. uh, but other than that, we haven't like done that much actually. We've been kind of low-key twins in some way. Yeah, and like it's it's kind of a everyday uh, as well. So so every day, Alec is um, being recognized as me, and I'm being yeah. recognized as him. So we yeah. can't like do something about it anyway. Yeah. Cool. So which one of you was sort of the first to suggest that you should, I don't know, get together as a duo and start a musical career together? Oh well, it uh, it actually it kind of happened pretty naturally because um, we played a game called Rock Band when we were like 12 Guitar Hero. and Guitar Hero. And yeah. then uh, we just got hooked on it. And then we were like, I don't know which, which one of us uh, suggested that we should play music, but- Maybe it was on mom. Maybe know. it was on mom, <laughs> like we don't know. But uh, yeah, so we attended like classes. Like I got to play guitar and he went to singing classes. And then, then we just like, we're like, we should put a band together. And then we did. And, Ever since we've just been several bands together, like yeah, always together, always together. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. So your entry to this year's uh, Dance Manager Grand Prix is called Silver Bullet. Uh, how has the response been so far to the song? It's been sick. Yeah. It's been so overwhelming. Uh, just after the announcement, it was my my phone just blew up and. When I woke up today, it, it, it was just a bomb waiting to close yeah. on us. It, it was yeah. so, so nice to yeah. see all the good comments. And like, it, people have just been like, receiving it so good. And it's just so heartwarming. Yeah, it's kind of the thing you, you want to get used to, but kind of hard to get used to. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah, but it's, yeah, it's just nice. Like, we're... There's so many kind people to us and writing to us and it's just been amazing. Truly. Great. What, what sort of message are you aiming to get across with uh, this song then? This song, um, it's kind of like a, a, a bridge with, between dancing and crying. We call it like dance crying. So uh, when we sing the song, it's kind of like life, you know, it, life is not always uh, black and white or black and white or like it's it's kind of in between it's uh, and yeah it, it, I don't know it's 
you you are kind of heart heartbroken yeah. um, at the same time that you are thinking about the good times you had in some way. So um, yeah. If you had to, I guess, decide between you, if one of you was more of a dancer and one of you was more of a crier, who who would who would get which role? <laughs> oh God! Dancer. I think I think the, I'm it, more yeah, dancer, he's the, he's the dancer. Like he has some moves. Like you just, it's unbelievable because we're not dancers at all. But sometimes yeah. he just pulls up something like I don't know, and I'm just like, okay. So yeah. I'll definitely be content with being the choir. <laughs> Can we expect any of these dance moves on show uh, at the contest next <laughs> month? There, there won't be that many dance shows, but it would be. Unfortunately, it's gonna be a total mindfuck. I'm just gonna say that, and I can't say yeah. it anymore. It's gonna be a mindfuck. Interesting, interesting. Um, how? How do you sort of see, because obviously this year is a bit different, uh, there won't be an audience and everything. How, how have you sort of taken that into account when you've been coming up with your ideas for a performance? Performance? Well, we, yeah. That's a good question, you know. Um, we, um, can't say too much, no, we can't say too much, but we're always just like willing to give up it all so whether there's an audience or not we're just like just gonna yeah. give it max like if it's one one man or a thousand or ten thousand we're, we're just going for it and it's gonna be uh, a performance uh, like uh, you'll, you'll never forget you'll never forget <laughs> yeah exactly cool i'm excited um, so on the songwriting team for Silver Bullet, you obviously have Lisa Kabler, who is a four-time winner of Dance Melody Grand Prix, uh, most recently with Leonora uh, in 2019, and obviously went on to win Eurovision in 2013 with Emily DeForest uh, and yeah. Only Teardrops. Do you feel any pressure to keep her sort of winning, winning streak going? <laughs> that's funny you ask because so many people ask us the, that question and we we haven't thought about it before we got asked we just we were just so uh honored by it and we saw it as a great support um just being so uh comfortable mm -hmm. it's an, it's just so comfortable to know that she's uh, been on the team and it's just going to be so good yeah we uh, we're not the kind of guys who uh, takes on pressure like um we're just in it to enjoy it so it, yeah it's just an honor as you said yeah yeah has she sort of given you any tips on i guess what she's learned from previous contests on on how to deal with everything oh we can't say much about it but uh, she definitely uh, gave us some good energy yeah yeah cool cool um, and I guess finally then, do you have a message for all your international fans who will be watching here on Weeby Blogs uh, and I'm sure have already got your song on repeat and uh, are constantly listening? Anything you'd like to say to them? Um, I'd like to say thank you for your support and uh, we will definitely do our best to give you an amazing show. Yeah. We won't disappoint you. <laughs> I'm sure you won't. I'm sure you won't. Well, no. thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. All the best for the contest next month. Yeah, thank sure. you. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Thanks a lot.